Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let's get under the hood on the rematch between Bermain Stefern and Chris Ariola. Right, Bermain Stefern is favored to win the rematch. He won the first fight by decision. He's favored in sports books to win the rematch, but the sports books have only made him a mile favorite. He's a minus one fifty. The play I like in this fight, and I'll list the reasons why, is I like Bermain Stavern to win the fight, minus one fifty, hedged with Chris Ariola by knockout at a between a plus 350 and a plus 500. To give you an idea, and you need to check the legality of gambling online in your jurisdiction. I'm not endorsing or encouraging online betting in any way, shape, or form unless it's legal where you are. Right now, Ladbrooks has Chris Ariola by KO at 4 to 1, a plus 400 in American terms. And uh, right now, Bet 365 has Ariola by KO at five to one, right? A plus 500. So there's an arbitrage opportunity here between the minus 150 on Bermain Stavern to win the fight and the plus 400 or plus 500 of Ariola by KO, right? If either happens, if Stavern wins by KO or if he wins by decision which he did last time, or if Ariola gets the knockout, you win, right, if you structure the bet, the hedge appropriately. But understand the risk involved. If Ariola outboxes, remains to burn, and wins by decision, you lose it all. Understand gambling is a tightrope act. There is great risk. Now let's talk about why I think Bermain Stavern likely wins this fight and that Ariola only has a puncher's chance. What I'm going to say too, it's going to sound hard to many, but this is the time to be hard, right? When we're betting money on a fight, right? Whether I'm right or wrong, whether you're right or wrong, we're going to have to make hard decisions before placing the bet. Here's my hard decision. Here are my hard conclusions. I don't believe Chris Ariola, after watching the first fight, has the boxing skills of Bermain Stavern. Nor do I believe Stavern has the speed, hand speed or foot speed, of Chris Ariola. In my opinion, to overcome the skill gap, Chris Ariola is going to have to swing for the fences. He's going to have to do something different. Right? Because if he boxes with Stavern, he gets outboxed. Now, what I want you to do is to picture Ariola's fight style. Right? Let's compare him to a great fighter and let's think about what he's doing wrong that in my opinion he can't change right in other words there's a difference between having the wrong strategy and because of deeply ingrained habits just having the wrong capability right having structural a structural foundation that doesn't allow you to do certain things. Now, in my opinion, Chris Ariola is hardwired. Right? A viewer here online once wrote me, we were having a discussion on Cal Zaghi and James DeGale, uh, two guys at 168 pounds. And the uh, viewer here online wrote me that he thought both guys 
did boxing like a musician plays jazz. Right? And I thought that was very appropriate because both of those guys could break cadence. They could change their rhythm. Right? They didn't fight on tracks. They didn't operate like trains. They could actually jump around. Right? Fight fast here, fight slow there, do different things. I don't believe that's Chris Ariola. I think Chris Ariola is hardwired. He's not flexible. He can't break cadence. He has to be on cadence. Right? You know what you're getting with Chris Ariola. He's not the fighter who's going to look at a tape of his opponent and then come out with a fight style that's out of character. He's in character. Right? He's not what I consider adaptive reactive. Right? He's not James Tony. He's not reading you, then changing everything that he does. Right? No, Chris Ariola is pretty hardwired. So let's talk about his fight style. Let's compare him for a moment to the great Iron Mike Tyson. Right? What I want you to do as you look at the film of the first Stavane, uh, Remain Stavern, Chris Ariola fight, which I've posted in my favorites on my channel page, is look at Ariola's upper body, right, from the waist up. Now, let me say this. Mike Tyson, and when I say Mike Tyson, I'm talking about very young Mike Tyson because we know not even older Mike Tyson was Mike Tyson, right? Young Mike Tyson could hide his upper body. In other words, when you saw a Tyson fight, Tyson had his hands like this, and Tyson would move, right? The upper body was hard to hit. Tyson would lean forward. Tyson wasn't the tallest fighter. Tyson would lean forward, so of course the lean makes his upper body, his trunk, even farther away from you. Then Tyson would move. There's a bounce right he would move his upper body wasn't stationary you couldn't do target practice on the upper body not just because Tyson had his hands up but because Tyson would move typically Tyson was trying to come in but he was cat quick and he would move so you couldn't time and tee off on his body with hooks because you weren't certain where he was gonna be Right now, Chris Ariola is much taller than Mike Tyson. Right, so there's more upper body for him to hide, and he just isn't in the kind of physical condition that would allow him to move that upper body for 12 rounds. Right, in other words, if you see Ariola come out and he's moving like this, you can look on your watch. In a round and a half, that movement's going to stop. Sadly for him, the fight's 12 rounds, right? Everyone comes in with a strategy they've worked on in camp. If that strategy requires more energy than they normally spend, then literally they might be able to throw that strategy for a round and a half, two rounds, but then sooner or later, Ariola's going to stop moving his upper body. And he's going to rely on his hands for defense. Right? The availability of his upper body gives Bermain Stavern an opportunity to hit Ariola with body shots. If there's a punch in the first fight, other than the knockdown punch at the end of the third round, that allowed Bermain Stavern to win that first fight, it's Stavern's sustained and withering body attack. Right? He's able to find Ariola's body with regularity. Ariola can't hide it. He can't move the body. Also, you heard me talk about in earlier videos how boxing really is about angles. To me, the best fighters keep you guessing on whether they're coming or going, right? They're not all front foot or mostly front foot. 
because that would be too predictable. Right? To be successful in boxing, you have to be unpredictable at the world-class elite level. Right? If your opponent knows you're always trying to come inside, that's not going to work because they'll set up counter-punching traps. Right? To the Pacquiao people, I want you to rewind the tape and listen to that last paragraph. Well, one of the problems Chris Ariola has, in addition to not being able to hide his upper body, is that Ariola is too front foot heavy. He doesn't fight well on his back foot. He's front foot heavy. What that does is it takes away his foot speed advantage. In other words, Remains to Vern doesn't have to worry about finding Chris Ariola. He doesn't even have to worry about lateral movement from Chris Ariola. Ariola is not a guy who's going to circle him. That's not who Ariola is. Ariola is a guy who is coming forward on train tracks, right, trying to walk you down. That doesn't work against a counterpuncher like Bermain Stavern. Right? Stavern is literally timing when to throw counter body punches on Chris Ariola. Ariola starts the first fight well. I think he wins the first round. He's looking good in the second round. By the third round, you know something's wrong. He's getting hit with shots. And he just doesn't have a skill foundation to take a step back and to think to himself, hey, let me have Bermain Stavern find me. Right? If you have the foot speed advantage, what are you doing getting hit with so many body punches up close? Right? If Bermain's to burn is taking out your rib cage, and by the way, that's the fastest way to deplete an opponent's stamina. Also, if you're sore down here, you're not getting a lot of leverage on your punches up here. Right? Ask yourself, why can't Ariola take a step back? Circle Stavern. Right? Have Stavern guessing when he's going to come inside. Why is Ariola so front foot heavy? So easy to find by Stavern. And that's because, simply put, that's who he is. He can't make the adjustments. He's a guy who used to weigh a lot less than heavyweight who gained weight to become a heavyweight. He has fast hands and fast feet for a heavyweight. But don't confuse that with actually using his feet. Actually being able to circle an opponent. To me, Ariola has a little lateral movement. Right? To me, Ariola doesn't use his foot speed well. There are not a lot of feints they are not a lot of foot things, right? Ariola can't fight backing up. So his game becomes one of trying to overwhelm you on his front foot with hand speed. During the telecast, you'll hear, I believe it's Andre Ward, doing color commentary on the telecast, talk about Ariola's weight and how his corner wants him to come in in the 230s. Right? The idea is that if Ariola is light enough, he'll be even faster. I don't believe that solves much. Because Ariola is just not wired to hide his body for 12 rounds. He can come in weighing 200 pounds. That bounce he has where he puts his hands up and tries to look like Mike Tyson even though he's much taller than Mike Tyson, that bounce is only going to last for two rounds, regardless of the weight that Ariola is at. Also, whether he's heavy or light, 
He's not a guy who feels comfortable on his back foot. When he's on his back foot, he's not throwing punches. He's not. Also, you know, you really can't change a man's temperament, I've learned. So when the bullets start flying, you do have guys who, literally, if the world slows down for them, they'll see the field. They'll know their options, right? The bullets are flying, and let's say a James Tony will stay in the pocket. He'll continue to see the counterpunching possibilities, right? He'll do moves where he just slides a foot back and moves to the side. He'll throw you off. Bernard Hopkins, another one. Joe Calzaghe is raining punches on Bernard Hopkins. Bernard Hopkins is able to see counterpunching opportunities. Juan Manuel Marquez, right? You know the personality type I'm talking about, right? Marquez is in against Manny Pacquiao. There's a huge hand speed advantage, but Marquez is picking his shots with all the hand speed around him. Marquez is still setting traps. The world's in slow motion for him. I don't believe you can teach that. I believe other men get in shootouts and panic. They go back to what they know. Whatever was taught in training camp, they have a vision of their A game and when the bullets start flying, they just revert to what they think works. When the bullets start flying against Bermain's Vern, Chris Ariola tries to throw punches back. He's not thinking lateral movement. He's not thinking setting traps of his own by backing up. No, he's right in front of Bermain Stavern, trying to make a fight of it. Now let's talk about Stavern. As I said, the body work is the difference in the first fight. Bermain Stavern is actually a pretty clever counterpuncher. He's not just countering Ariola, he's countering him to the body. He's one of the sport's hardest punchers pound for pound. Right? He hits Ariola so hard, Andre Ward, doing the fight, thinks Ariola has a broken nose. Right? Ariola's entire ferocity and drive change after that punch. The punch is that hard. You can tell, too, that on some of the other Bermain's to Vern body shots, Ariola literally needs 30 seconds to recover from them. Right? Here's the problem with Stavern, and I know he was recruited by Nick Saban to play college football. But Stavern really does have slow foot speed. Stavern's hand speed, let's be charitable, it's average at best. He doesn't have great hand speed. Let's just say his jab is not going to remind anyone of Carlos Monzon's jab or Larry Holmes's jab, right? This guy is really a guy relying on timing, counterpunching, and power. But against Chris Ariola, I believe that's enough because Ariola isn't making him pay otherwise, right? Remains to Vern must have thought it was Christmas, how he's on his back foot. Stavern can fight on his back foot. He's on his back foot, and Chris Ariola's following him around the ring. Think about it. You're a knockout puncher. Could, could you imagine George Foreman fighting a guy who's actually trying to follow him around the ring? Think about that for a second. Right, so Stavern is on his back foot. Chris Ariola is right in front of him. Right? Stavern starts hitting Ariola hard. The best Ariola can do is to back up and gather his thoughts every now and then. But again, Ariola on his back foot can't fight. He's not going to hurt you on his back foot. So when he's on his back foot, that's when Stavern goes on his front foot and Stavern is out hunting. Even though Stavern's jab isn't landing that much, it's enough to throw off Ariola because again, 
Ariola can't change tempo. He's not a jazz guy. He's not trying out different rhythms for different rounds. Right? So, if a boxing match breaks out, I think Stavern's the better boxer. If a shootout breaks out, while I agree Ariola has a puncher's chance, I think Stavern actually has the harder punch. Right? So I give Ariola only a puncher's chance in this fight. The first fight was an eye opener. I'll say that Stavern has lifted his skill level considerably. Understand Stavern is in his 30s. Stavern is the kind of guy who can add things to his game. He actually is adaptive reactive. So I like Stavern to win this fight at minus 150, hedged with Ariola by KO at plus 400. Or plus 500 if you bet at bet 365. I believe there's a money-making opportunity and a difference between the minus 150 and the plus 400. But juggle how much you put on each side. Just understand that you lose it all if the faster-handed guy, Ariola, wins the decision. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and let me just say, you know, Stavern's improvement as a counterpuncher is remarkable. Understand that counterpunchers tend to do better in rematches because in the first fight, right, a counterpuncher will take a few rounds to figure out the punch pattern. I thought Stavern started slow the first time, took a couple of rounds to figure out Chris Ariola. In the second fight, I don't believe he'll need those two rounds. As it was, Stavern won the first fight by a few rounds. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.